The following is a World Class Bullshitters exclusive. I had been working on a video called The Year That Broke Star Wars. I've been hinting at it for quite some time. It will still get made, but today an article from a source that I get all of my fashion knowledge from, Esquire, came out, and that stopped The Year That Broke Star Wars dead in its tracks. Why? Well, there's an article that is so misguided that it belongs in May of this year, when the shill media, shill media, shidia, sorry, the shill media were trying to come up with ways to bash the fans for disliking The Last Jedi while simultaneously trying to make excuses for Star Wars failure. It's an article full of lies, misguided anger, and fear. Fear of the battle station known as Disney. It's titled, The Year Star Wars Fans Finally Ruined Star Wars. And it's a doozy. So, uh, let's take a look at it. Some of my earliest memories about movies are of Star Wars. Taking old wrapping paper tubes and playing lightsabers with my dad, dressing up as Luke Skywalker, desperately wanting the Millennium Falcon Lego set, watching the original VHS box trilogy and having a fast forward through Leonard Maltin's boring interview with George Lucas every goddamn time. That's what Star Wars has always been to me. A movie that shaped my childhood, along with my understanding of good and evil. Luke and Leia, Obi-Wan and Yoda, all of the characters aided in honing my moral compass through my formative years. Of course I grew up, but I never forgot those characters or their values. In fact, I'm only somewhat ashamed to admit that I cried in the theater when I, a grown-ass adult, still yet to be seen, watched Han Solo die. It was like losing a member of my own family. Even though tearing up during The Force Awakens, I had no idea that just three years later, even the mention of Star Wars would fill me with dread. These days, Star Wars coverage is a large part of my job. As a cultural-centric writer and editor, hardly a week goes by where I don't touch something Star Wars related. Ever since Disney rebooted the franchise, it's produced some of the highest grossing movies of the last four years, not to mention limitless new takes and theories about each film. But within the past year, the conversation about Star Wars has gotten deeply unpleasant. In 2018, I've gotten literal death threats, been called homophobic slurs, and even racist about a family movie that defined my childhood. And that isn't a problem limited to my experience. Oh no, my online harassment has paled in comparison to others specifically the female stars of the two new films. And that's because, over the past year, the conversation surrounding Star Wars has devolved into something ugly and unrecognizable. Whereas the vocal majority of Star Wars fans were once simply passionate people who cosplay and debate the logistics of the Kessel Run, they've now been overpowered. On the internet, at least. Star Wars and a loud section of Star Wars fans have tragically become synonymous with hate, bigotry, and pervasive assholeness in 2018. From various sinister online campaigns to racist misogynistic attacks on actors to bafflingly stupid takes and interpretations of the film, The Last Jedi inspired the worst impulses of a far-right movement that's taking hold of the internet and expanding its influence into the real world. The hate began almost immediately after The Last Jedi hit theaters to positive reviews from critics. Days after the movie was released, Rotten Tomatoes was swarmed with negative reviews, marking the biggest disparity between fans and critics in the history of a franchise. As of this week, the film has a 91% from critics and 45% from fans. While many of the fans have legitimate concerns with the actual filmmaking, many of these audience reviews are coming from a different place, like a comparatively tame one I pulled at random from the first page of Rotten Tomatoes. I'm still lamenting over how terrible this film was. I have to pretend I never saw it just to get me through the day. We're not buying your political agenda. I didn't see Solo as a way of giving the finger to Ryan Johnson and Kathleen Kennedy, and many others did the same. This became the narrative surrounding Star Wars and the rejection of The Last Jedi throughout 2018. Emboldened members of the far right used Star Wars as another easy target for online hatred. What's confusing is how badly these alleged Star Wars fans misunderstand Star Wars. From the very beginning, it was a progressive franchise, even considering some of the embarrassing Hollywood norms of the 1970s. George Lucas gave Princess Leia a blaster and had her take charge of her own rescue while many women on the screen at the time remained the damsel in distress. The rebels fought against a totalitarian empire that not so subtly resembled Nazi Germany. It's a film that made women like Mon Mothma revolutionary leaders. I'm sorry, she had like two or three sentences. But back to the article. This film was at least, for genre films of its time, wildly progressive in terms of representation and ideas. Yet somehow in 2018, simply including women and actors of color in a Star Wars universe is pushing a political agenda? That's not a political statement. It's a franchise attempting to lead the way into a modern era of movies. This type of hatred began to ramp up in 2015 when trolls forced Daisy Ridley, who plays Rey, the central hero of the new trilogy, off social media. Before The Force Awakens was even released, racists threatened to boycott the film because it supported white genocide by featuring actors of color. This became a long, fringe movement that, by midway through 2018, had also driven star Kelly Marie Tran off social media completely. The actress who played the resistance mechanic Rose Tico in The Last Jedi was the target of a disgusting online harassment campaign. The Asian-American actress, Tran, was attacked for months by racist and misogynistic trolls. 
In August, Tran spoke out for the first time since leaving social media in a powerful essay in the New York Times. The backlash eventually became organized enough to warrant responses from Disney and The Last Jedi director Ryan Johnson himself. In fact, this poor guy has spent most of his year explaining the film to idiots online. Meanwhile, these trolls launched an entire campaign to finance their own fan-made Star Wars film. While this is a laughable idea for delusional racists, the message was clear. The campaign's manifesto read, The fans are completely divided, and the core goal of Star Wars has been abandoned. The goal is not to make one half of the fandom happy over the other, it is to make a film that the fandom in general as a whole enjoys. Other fans penned an entire declaration decrying The Last Jedi as too political and using the new characters as tools to push an agenda of masculine inferiority. It's fucking insanity, and let me just take a moment right here to remind you that this is a family movie, largely designed to sell toys to children. In fact, some of the industry analysts have suggested that the lower than expected box office numbers of Solo could be a result of The Last Jedi backlash. That Solo just wasn't very good also probably had something to do with it. And after Solo, Disney completely refocused its future plans. While it would be a stretch to the imagination that Trolls directly affected the direction of a multi-billion dollar franchise, there is no denying that the executives at Disney have taken note of this narrative. It's fascinating that as Disney has begun to course correct Star Wars, it seems that J.J. Abrams is charged by the powers that be with getting both fans and critics excited about Episode 9. And what's concerning about this is who the people pulling the strings might be listening to. Even if Disney and Lucasfilm are right ignoring its loudest, most bigoted critics out there, is it possible that they might be encouraged after The Last Jedi to play it safe with Episode 9? It's certainly a possibility, especially considering Abrams' very safe Force Awakens, which I should note fans also hated for being too safe. How convenient how you just brush that one under the rug. Perhaps I'm just entirely too logged on, I most definitely am, but the conversation surrounding Star Wars has become something dark and horrible, something I dread reading about. As a kid, something like Star Wars seemed so simple. It was obvious who was good and who was evil. The movie themselves, even today, make it clear. Hate, fear, and tyranny is bad. Inclusion, hope, democracy is good. And it's possible that there are people out there in the 70s and 80s, and even in the early internet days of the prequels, outraged by the franchise's message of good. But back then, people didn't have a public forum like social media to share their evil opinions directly with the filmmakers. Now, this new trilogy is the first of Star Wars films to exist in a landscape where politics and culture have become synonymous with the conversation largely done via social media. This country is run by a TV personality whose most pervasive form of communication with the American population is through Twitter. In fact, Russian bots actually did target The Last Jedi on social media, but their impact on the conversation was negligible. And it's a time where every conversation inevitably becomes something needlessly miserable. Everyone has a take, everyone has an opinion, no matter how bad. Just like you, Matt. And like everything else we once loved, it has been ruined by bad people on the internet. <laughs> I would say that this is giving too much credit to what could be called as a small minority of internet trolls. But that's just not the way things work post-2016. These trolls are the anonymous, despicable beating heart of America. They are holding up a mirror to our society. They are ensuring that the worst of us have a voice to incite real change. They elect an immoral, racist golden toilet for a president. And that same sickness has bled into something once as harmless as a children's space movie. If the moral Star Wars fans, the ones who applaud the films for better representing the people, ideas, and goodness around us stay silent, well, the trolls control the narrative. This was a year where the trolls won. That doesn't mean there's not hope. The Last Jedi came out a year ago this week. And there's a year until Episode 9 for the true fans to take control of this narrative. To formulate an eloquent and loud and respectable opinions about what Star Wars has and should always mean. That's our only hope. I can't believe this crap passes as printworthy. Besides the flat-out false information, or fake news, this writer, Matt Miller, is just so wrong. It's not even opinion-based. He just flat-out left out facts and resolutions to problems that he's blamed us, the fans, for. Let's take a look at the author's timetable. His earliest memory was in the year 2000, based off of his opening value statement, or attempt at acting like he's one of us Star Wars fans. That's the first release of the LEGO Millennium Falcon, and the video set he's mentioning is the Faces trilogy from 1995. You may know them as the One Last Time box set. So we know the guy is in his 20s. Is his age important? Yes, it tells a lot about his worldview and his attention to details, or lack thereof. It also tells us why he's gone out of his way to mention a tweet that calls him racist. Except it really doesn't. It just shows the writer what a hypocrite he is, and he doesn't like that. So there's another lie. Keep a counter, folks. It's one of those articles. Now I have problems with every paragraph of this article, so let's break them down. First off, he keeps hiding behind the phrase, family movie. Like, that's going to shield Star Wars from criticism and insulate him from defending something so good and pure as the family. As a quick side note, I did find something interesting, that every time people legitimately criticize Star Wars, its defenders throw out the kid defense. It's for kids. It's a kid's movie. Don't look too deep into it. Except that it's not. A basic Google search finds this. 
Media reports that 70% of those snapping up advanced tickets to the seventh Star Wars title were males ages 18 to 49. The average age of those ticket buyers was 34. Ah, evidence. Something this article lacks. So to use the kid's defense is not only shady, but flat out wrong. But hey, what do you expect? Star Wars and a loud section of Star Wars fans have tragically become synonymous with hate, bigotry, and pervasive assholeness in 2018, from various sinister online campaigns to racist and misogynistic attacks on actors to bafflingly stupid takes and interpretations of the film. It's only become that because of the extreme narrative created by the ardent defenders of the film. They can't craft a genuine response to any criticism, so they jump to the name-calling, which is real mature. The Phantom Menace is the antithesis of everything they try to paint Star Wars fans displeased with Disney. We are a welcoming community with people from every walk of life, i.e. diversity. We're fun, engaging, and not corporately bought or paid for. Your corporate overlords are unhappy with our displeasure, so you, the shill media, always try to spin criticism into sexism or any other ism. Not that I condone sexism, or any ism for that matter. Isms, in my opinion, are not good. A person should not believe in an ism, he should believe in himself. To jump back into this garbage heap that someone was paid to create, let's go back to earlier this year when we heard about the people's displeasure with the film and the Rotten Tomatoes discrepancy. It was first blamed on Russian bots. Then Rotten Tomatoes themselves came out to verify that it was all from legitimate accounts. That's where we knew there would be a problem because people can't accept that this film wasn't universally praised. It, The Last Jedi, checked off all the arbitrary boxes set by these kinds of people. What's confusing is how badly these alleged Star Wars fans misunderstand Star Wars. From the very beginning, it was a progressive franchise. But that's because the movie itself was great. People don't allow for hollow characters and a rehashed plot to pass just because of modern sensibilities that are touted as important over a good story. Something Disney Star Wars is sorely lacking in. You see, we're already past the women in the movies is a bad thing. We're already past the black people in the movies is a bad thing. The problem stems from Disney acting like they're changing the world through Star Wars, leaving out originality for a rehash, then hiding behind women and minorities. They're hurting the very cause by having stupid people defend them and tow a company line that quite frankly helps no one, not even them. It's all self-destructive and financially stupid. Folks, it's now time for another lie. This type of hatred begun to ramp up in 2015 when trolls forced Daisy Ridley, who plays Rey, the central hero of the new trilogy, off social media. I've covered this, but let's take another look at Matt's work. Daisy Ridley was bullied off social media, except she wasn't. Let's hear what she said in her own words. In an interview with the Radio Times, Ridley describes social media as damaging to mental health, especially for teenagers. It's such a weird thing for young people to look at distorted images of things they should be, she said. Ridley has been vocal about quitting social media and left Instagram last year after backlash for sharing a post about victims of gun violence. Hey Matt, let me ask you the same question all of us fans are asking Disney and Lucasfilm on a daily basis. Where's the Star Wars? Seriously, you just flat out lied in your article. Or, maybe you're misinformed and didn't do the research. Is... is that possible? Would someone like you go in half-cocked and make assumptions because it sounds good in your article? No. This article also goes out of its way to say Kelly Marie Tran was bullied off social media by trolls, but no. Actually, it was Russian bots. Take a look here. And here. And here. But that doesn't fit Matt's narrative either. The backlash eventually became organized enough to warrant responses from Disney. Let's look at those responses. Hmm. He's skewing the timeline to play into the narrative he's trying to create. Pay attention to the Disney Responded link, and you'll see that the response came out two days after the film's release. Hardly the long-term response to the organized hate that apparently happened, but didn't. The Last Jedi director Ryan Johnson himself, in fact, this poor guy has spent most of his year explaining his films to idiots online. The guy has spent most of his year being useless and attacking fans, or blocking assholes as he likes to say. I guess it's because Ryan was just so busy working on his trilogy. His life is just so dense. We don't, we don't get it. But have fun with Knives Out, Ryan. When it comes to the fan remake, we're not involved. It never happened, so there's not much to say about it. But it captured the attention of people enough to send money. What a great scheme. After our buddy Matt attempts to rile you up, he hides behind the shield again. It's fucking insanity, and let me just take a moment right here to remind you that this is a family movie largely designed to sell toys to children. Yet no one is buying the toys, my friend. Do I... do I have to take you to the dying last days of Toys R Us? Do I have to take you to all the clearance outlets across the world? Do I have to play the music? Ah, <sighs> it's so calming. But that's for another time.
Star Wars toys aren't geared towards the kids. Hasbro tells you they are to excuse the poor quality, but it's the same adult men who collect them that bought 70% of the pre-sale movie tickets. The same ones who were attacked by Lucas and Disney film and now Esquire. I wonder what advertisers would say to these kinds of lies being thrown around. Ah, fuck it, print is dead. Star Wars toys are also a shining example of corporate ineptitude. Disney and Lucasfilm dictate who gets made. Hasbro pays them a bunch of money in licensing fees and then eats the losses. When a thousand rows Ticos don't sell and shit from three years ago can't move, not even a clearance store like Ollie's, we know that Star Wars is in a pretty bad place. Every time Disney and Lucasfilm want to avoid an online controversy like hashtag Where's Ray, even though she showed up in the first wave of action figures, Hasbro gets screwed through the nose and retailers have to ship out their excess stock or pitch it. The only people actually hurt by the garbage decisions is the working class, but that headline isn't sexy enough for Esquire. Now, Solo was a failure, plain and simple. It was a bomb that cost more money than it should have, and that's thanks to the great leadership of Cray Cray KK, Kathleen Kennedy herself. Disney knows this, and then Bob Iger was the one who had to take the bullet and talk about how they needed to slow down with Star Wars. This whole article implodes once it starts talking about the president. Blah, 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 change the record, dude. Not really a part of the argument until you skew what's going on and you want to make it political. People upset with Star Wars aren't right-wing trolls or bigots. There's people on every end of the spectrum that hate the damn movies. But blinded by virtue signaling, you miss the point. Much like every point you make. If I were to equate you to a Star Wars character, you would be a stormtrooper because you can't hit shit. The rest of this article is summed up in three words. I'm from California, or Orange Man Bad. I hope the intention of this article was to get the attention of us, the fandom menace, because just when people may have become complacent with Star Wars, a very dangerous emotional state for both Star Wars and the fandom menace alike, it's internet trash like this that reminds us why we fight this culture war. It's garbage like this article from Esquire that are the most dangerous because they take lies and half-truths, again, fake news, and skews them into a narrative that makes fans look bad, Disney and Lucasfilm victims, and these writers pious. But like everyone who uses lies and treachery in this culture war to further their narrative, you too will be brought to task, and the facts will put you down. So initially, this vocal minority was so small that we had little to no power. Now yet we're to blame for the year that broke Star Wars. A failed movie, a dead merchandise line, and an excuse always around the corner is what killed Star Wars. Nothing more, nothing less. So folks, 2019 is an incredibly important year because a few things are happening. First off, Celebration is the first public gathering post The Last Jedi, post the failure of Solo, post this whole online smear campaign by a bunch of liars like Esquire magazine. It is the first time that will all be in one place. It's about sending a message that the people that dislike Star Wars Episode Eight and Solo A Star Wars Story aren't hateful bigots. We're just dissatisfied like any other movie. You know, when you criticize Man of Steel or Batman vs. Superman or Suicide Squad, you're not attacked. But if you question anything created by the House of Mouse, you are the problem, not the property itself. That is where a dangerous precedent has been set, because every media outlet toes the company line of Disney. They take no excuse it is always the fault of fans, never the fault of Disney. And that is the damn problem, and that is scary. Especially as Disney continues to purchase every studio in town. In January of 2019, they now own 20th Century Fox. People are blinded by the whole, hey, good news, the X-Men and the Fantastic Four and Deadpool can play with the Avengers. Yay! That's good for you, but think of a bigger problem. That is why we just got Once Upon a Deadpool that has been released to middling reviews. 5s out of 10s, 2.5s out of 5s. It's a 50% no matter how you try to split it. But it's a test. It's a bigger test. All it does is represent if people are dumb enough to buy into a PG-13 Deadpool because Disney really does care about the family. They will not put out merchandise that questions or offends or makes anyone uncomfortable. They want to be, oh, it's Disney, my kids can consume it, I'll buy it blindly because I know it's safe. And it's a great business tactic, but it kills artistic creativity, it kills originality, and it kills competition. When the WWF purchased the WCW professional wrestling died. Without competition, you have no reason to become better than you truly are. And instead of getting better, what does Disney do? They just buy up every studio, they will own every property, and soon they will own all of your entertainment. They already own these media outlets, metaphorically, because every company out there will defend them. That's what this Matt guy is doing for Esquire, that is what John Campia does, that is what Scott Mendelson does. Go find me, someone who blindly defends Disney Star Wars, and I'll show you all how they're classified as a shill. Other things in 2019 that are important is the Star Wars theme park that's opening. If there's anything to take away from this article, it's the closing sentence, and there's a year until episode 9 for the true fans to take control of this narrative to formulate eloquent and loud and respectable opinions about what Star Wars has and should always mean. I hate to break it to you, Matt, 
but the true fans already have formulated an eloquent opinion, a loud one, a respectable one about Star Wars and what it has and should be. We've already beat you to the punch. You see, my friend, you're in the third party and you don't realize it. You're not really a Star Wars fan. So you can tell everybody in the world, I wanted a Lego set as a kid. That makes me a Star Wars fan. You know what? I wanted a Sega Genesis as a kid. I wouldn't call myself a Sega Genesis enthusiast. I just wanted something because it was popular and new. Well, I watched Star Wars on videotape and ran around like Luke Skywalker as a little kid. I did the same thing, but I'm also not misguided by a sense of nostalgia that I will allow a company to make up lies and attack fans because of valid, basic criticisms. There are a lot of things you left out in this article conveniently. And that is why stuff like this always riles up the opposite side. Not because we're taking an introspective look on ourselves and seeing the ugly side that you want to talk about. No, there is no ugly side in this community. All we see is bullshit permeating every facet of Star Wars reporting. I can't go a single day without seeing somebody talk about representation and stuff in Star Wars that had already been there. Oh, people hate black people in Star Wars, do they? Then why the fuck is Lando Calrissian one of the most produced action figures in the Star Wars line? He's in the second tier of the characters. It's Han, Luke, and Leia, and maybe Darth Vader in the top. And then you got your others. You got your droids, your Landos, your Chewbacca's. Lando's been there since 1980. Please, please tell me how John Boyega's inclusion in Star Wars is groundbreaking. You want to bring up Princess Leia? Everybody loves Princess Leia. The world mourned when she died. But you know what? People don't like Rey. People don't like Rose Tico. People really didn't like Jyn Erso. So much that Jyn Erso toys sold for three cents and still couldn't do it. They're bad characters, my friend. That is where the disconnect is. The fandom menace dislikes these characters because they suck, they're hollow, they lack any integrity. You want to lump on the politics, and then you want to use that to defend the films. And that is where the real disconnect lies. And finally, the third thing that Disney Star Wars is looking for in 2019 is the release of Episode 9. But it already has a built-in excuse no matter how good or bad it does. Competition. The Holidays. Everybody's going to have an excuse for this movie, and it's going to be the same thing. I guarantee it, because I get my future Star Wars content from the future, and the future's never wrong. Well, that's what I've been told. So, folks, I'm tired of getting fired up over garbage like this, so go check out the article yourself and see the bullshit. Now, I am going to do something I don't normally do. I'm sending out a message to Esquire. I think you guys really need to keep your house in order. If you allow these kind of bullshit articles, these lies, that I can present you the opposite true facts to... Well, then maybe you shouldn't post stuff like that. Maybe you should only focus on what alcohol is trendy with Idris Elba or what shoes Jake Johnson wore to the premiere of Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse. Esquire is a little niche magazine and it does fine. But when it tries to step out into the larger world and really make a stance about Star Wars fandom, you just lost at sea. You have no frame of reference. Everybody that wants to tell you, I grew up watching Star Wars and liking Lego sets, Great. That doesn't make you informed on the situation. I don't care that you cried when Han Solo died. Good for you. Guess what? Harrison Ford's okay. He didn't really die in the movie. I hate to break it to you. And Solo failed because people didn't like The Last Jedi, and people just are tired of Disney Star Wars. Disney is the death mark, and that's all I got to say about that. So if you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up, guys. People want these videos. We've been listened to millions and millions of times. You want more of them, you got to get the views up. So you can get this video up to a bunch of views and a bunch of thumbs up. I'll be making more. There's actually a part two to this video that I could make. So if this video hits you know, 50,000 views and 1,000 thumbs up relatively soon, well then, God damn it, part two will be out before you can even imagine it to be. So get excited for that. I got tons of content coming your way. And make sure you guys catch me Monday through Friday, 7.45 a.m. Eastern Standard Time for Good Morning Pop Culture. We're getting closer to Christmas and the Christmas break, but you know what? The garbage tier entertainment news doesn't stop, and neither does world-class bullshitters. So smash that like button, check out our Patreon page. A buck a month goes a long way, but five bucks, which is only 17 cents a day, goes even further, and you can get more access, and you can get involved. Shit, we may have a live stream dedicated to the garbage article that this actually was. I want to know what you guys think, so down in the comments below, please tell me your thoughts. I'll be paying attention to them very closely, because I want to know what the fans think about shit like this. You know, we want to talk about, oh, two 2018, the year that the fans killed Star Wars. You know, it's shit like this that killed Star Wars. It's the fans that are trying to save it. Star Wars was Humpty Dumpty. It fell off the fucking wall, and we're trying to put the pieces back together again. But much like Humpty Dumpty, they changed the narrative because it's offensive to eggs. So go coddle yourselves in your little safe spaces, and uh, get back to me when you got the facts, Esquire.